Um, someone who I know thinks that the Broncos can win out is joining us now live. We have Zach Stevens on the field at Power Field at Mile High after a big 29 to 12 win. First time we've ever seen that score, Zach. Oh my gosh, a score got me. And you know who talked about a score got me after the game? was Sean Payton, and he did not know what a scorigami was. So he was told, well, you've had two scorigamis this year, 70 to 20 and 29 to 12. And Sean said, I think I like tonight's one a little bit better. And what a turnaround for the Broncos. That 70 to 20 loss to the Dolphins was this year. And now the Broncos are the hottest team in the NFL, right? A five-game win streak, six and five. They're tied for the final wild card spot in the AFC, which is just absurd. And I don't know who has more swag and confidence now, if it's Todd Davis or if it's the Denver Broncos, who are the hottest team in the NFL. I who do you it. think it is? <laughs> I, don't, I think it's tied right there. I mean, Garrett Bowles just shut down the defensive player of the year and Miles Garrett. And Garrett, after the game, said, uh, I just, I like to eat good food. I like to hang out with my family and I like to play with this group of guys. And this group of guys is riding a mile high of confidence right now. It really felt like the Broncos were going to win this game from the jump. They get out to that 14 to zero lead with really, and then they, they give it up. They could have been easily tied 14 to 14, but the red zone was the difference in this game, specifically in the first half, specifically with maintaining that 14-0 lead. Broncos went two for two in the red zone to start the game. The Browns go 0 for two, having to settle for two field goals. And then the Broncos defense just put their ears back. And what do we hear with every great defense? Get that lead, and then it should be over. And that's when the Broncos pass rush really woke up. I mean, Nick Benito goes off. You even see Drew Sanders get a strip sack. When Drew Sanders is balling, this defense is going to be really hard to stop. And speaking of the defense, 15 takeaways in their past four games. This is just getting silly now. It is wild how good this defense has been, how clutch they've been. And it's just playing complimentary football. The Broncos offense gets the ball in great field position in this game. And the Broncos come away with their biggest win in terms of points. 17-point win today against a 7-3 and three football team. Now, I know the Browns were on their third-string quarterback then had to go to their second-string quarterback in this game. But the Broncos' defense made life hell for the quarterbacks on the Browns. And Broncos' offense, one of the things that Sean Payton talked about after the game was the physicality. The Broncos won the physicality of this game on both sides of the ball. And that's just huge for this team, especially when playoff football comes around, especially with a team like the Browns, who are a really physical team. They're a great running team. Broncos hold them to just over uh, 100 rushing yards today. And then the Broncos ran for almost 170 yards. That's going to be huge come playoff time. Yeah, they've been playing really great. Uh, I want to know how Sean's energy was after the game. I know the last couple of games, even though they won, he was kind of eh, on the border, feeling like they could play better. How did he feel tonight? How was his energy? You know what? I don't know if we're ever going to see Sean come out and be like super pumped about a win, but he was not disappointed. And kind of like you're saying, Todd, the past many wins in this five-game win streak, Sean has seemed more disappointed and focused on the negatives and the positives. That was not the case tonight. Like I said, he pointed to the physicality of this team, and I think he was really proud of how they played in the trenches. Miles Garrett, a defensive player of the year, the defensive player of the year. Uh, he's having a heck of a season. They hold him to zero sacks, only two tackles. And then the Broncos run defense. They, they looked struggling for about a quarter there. But the rest of the game, they showed up, uh, and the Broncos were just laying big hits. So Sean was happy with his team. And I guess when you have a winning record is when you can be happy with this team. And this is the first time in the Sean Payton era that the Broncos have had a winning team. Six to five, five-game win streak. Now is the time to be happy. And Sean's focusing on the good things now. You know, heading into this game, we were talking about just how – good this Cleveland Browns defense really is do you think the absence of Denzel Ward played that big of a difference in this game they were able to put up this offense 27 points um, on this Browns defense and like I said earlier in the week I didn't think anybody was going to score either team over 20 points in this one yeah I don't know if any of us had the Broncos scoring 29 points I think all five of us the highest scoring was like 24 points and that's a credit to the Broncos big boys up 
front. They don't get enough credit, but they deserve all the credit after a win like today. Not only holding Miles Garrett, but the Broncos running for a season-high 169 yards. This is what we thought the game was going to be, that the Broncos were going to have to run the ball because that what they could not do was let Miles Garrett and the number one pass defense, not just – with the number one pass defense in the NFL in the past 20 years. They could not let them pin their ears back and attack the Broncos, uh, and they did not. And that was a credit to the Broncos' running game because running for 169 yards was absolutely crucial. Sean actually said after the game that they spent a whole night talking about how they could not let Miles Garrett kill them. And so while the, Bron while the Browns did not have Denzel Ward, I'm really happy the Broncos did not change their game plan and try to pass the ball. Instead, they really stuck to the run. And that was a key in this game. That's a key in playoff football. And that's what the Broncos are built on. And that's something that the Broncos just completely got away from. Sean Payton got away from. And this team got away from in the first six weeks of the season. And their 1-5 and five start was running the football. Now we've seen this game plan multiple times in their win streak. Where the Broncos throw the ball 20-something times. And they run the ball almost 40 times and this is exactly their formula for success it's Javante going for over 50 it's Samaje going for over 50 would like to see Jaleel a little in there a little more but not going to complain and then Russ also he took over that touchdown drive with a, a couple of massive runs including that one for a touchdown yeah, that's that's definitely their recipe on offense. Um, on defense, I feel like they continue to play fast, continue to get takeaways, and continue to lay some big hits. Um, I love that hit by uh, Baron Browning on the goal line. It looked clean to us. I don't yeah. know how it looked in the stadium, but how did it look um, in person um, for you? Well, there was booze in the stadium for about the next 10 minutes, and uh, it looked the same thing the same way in this stadium. The fans were not happy with that at all. But you know what, Todd, the game has changed even just the past couple of years that you haven't been in. The Broncos just have to learn. You can't go high at all on a quarterback. Um, if you're going to hit them hard, it's got to be like right in the belly button because you can't go low on them. You can't go remotely high on them. But the team's response was huge to that because that was like, I mean, he got hit at like the two-yard line that was going to be a punt for the Browns. And instead, they get the ball at nearly the 40-yard line. It seemed like the Broncos had given the Browns some hope or maybe the refs had given the Browns some hope in the game there. But the Broncos' defense comes out, shuts them down. And that was a massive response. And the Broncos have honestly, since week six, have responded incredibly well to adversity, big picture and small picture. And that's what winning football teams have. So, yeah, no one here agreed with the hit. Um, but it was how they responded, which was huge. And speaking of not agreeing with things, Sean Payton wanted to credit Cortland Sutton with the catch that was called back for offensive pass interference. He didn't, he didn't mention the ref's name specifically. He just said, uh, I'm, I'm going to give Sutton that catch. Yeah, we, we're going to give Sutton that one as well. You know, I want to stick with the offense here for a second. Just talk about Russell Wilson, again, being incredibly efficient with the football. Um, as much as his completion percentage, you know, isn't overly impressive, 59%, obviously. Uh, he did throw a touchdown, put one on a rope there to Adam Troutman. He ran one in. He was incredible with his legs here today. Safe to say that Russell Wilson is doing his part in helping this team win football games. 100%, and it almost feels like every single win is the same performance from Russell Wilson, whether it's a little bit more through the air or a little bit more with his legs. And today it was more with his legs and what he was able to do. Uh, we got a friend, BK, stopping by um, right Bronco. here. Uh, giving a shout-out to, uh, to the five here, straight win Broncos. But <laughs> get out of here is what Todd Davis says. He's running now. He doesn't want anything to do with the way you're looking, Todd. Um, but uh, – um, but, but Russ, he, he just continues to be that perfect game manager. And now, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Russ is doing what needs to be done for the Broncos to get these wins. And speaking of that throw to Troutman, I mean, what an incredible catch by Adam Troutman to get that knee in. Great challenge by Sean Payton. Cortland Sutton, after the game, said there was no doubt in his mind that Troutman had that in. And it was a great call uh, for Sean to challenge that. But Let's take a look at what Russ was able to do. I mean, he was running back there. He probably ran for like 40 yards before throwing the ball and finding Troutman. Also, the, the throw to Sutton almost could have been a touchdown in the end zone. It would have been a really, really difficult catch by Cortland. But uh, Russ just continues to play really, really good football and way better than what the stat sheet says. 
And one of the things you can look at, and the only thing that matters is that five game win streak, six and five record. Yeah, man, I love it. They're playing at such a high level. Uh, thank you for having, for coming on. I mean, it is your show, but I'm glad to have you on week in and week out. I can't yeah. wait to break down the rest of the game with you tomorrow. Up and early, we'll be at it. Catch us tomorrow at 11 o'clock. 11 a.m.? And we'll be rock and rolling. Before you let's go, go Zach, let's go. I can't wait. Talking about the 6-5 and five team that is tied for a playoff spot. Can you believe it? 6-5. and five. Before you go, Zach, really quick, any last things from the players who took to the podium uh, after Sean Payton did this, this evening? You know what? We're going to need uh, our guy here who's producing to pull up. I posted a video on my Twitter account of Pat Sertan. You don't need to watch the video, but you need to look at Pat's swag. I don't know who's swag here, Todd or Pat, because he just has an awesome coat on and this team. I mean, Justin Simmons said it yesterday. The confidence, or said it last week, confidence is at an all-time high. Now after beating a 7-3 and three Browns team, which, by the way, Sean Payton said, we beat a good team. What Sean Payton said after every other win, he said, oh, we're going to play in bigger games. We're going to play in bigger games. Nope. Not after this one. He said, we beat a good team today. It's a good win. Uh, so this Broncos team is just swagged out. They're confidenced out. And now they get a 6-5 and five Texans team for potentially uh, a playoff spot. And also, one more thing on this. This wasn't just a big win because it gets the Broncos over 500, keeps their winning streak going. But now the Broncos have the tiebreaker over the Browns, which could just be huge come the playoff time because – Browns aren't going to get Deshaun Watson back. They're probably going to come back to earth a little bit. And I wouldn't be shocked if at the end of the season, Broncos and Browns have the same record and Broncos have the tiebreak now. Check that out. I love, uh, love that we're talking about playoff football here at the end of November, given the fact that this team started one and five. It's just been an incredible turnaround. And it's been really fun to hear from you, Zach, just like every post game show. We appreciate you. Uh, get out of there. Go home. Kick your feet up. Thanks, you have your guys. Life for us. Yeah. I <laughs> will. Hopefully my fingers aren't frozen off after this, but love joining you guys in the stadium and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Zach.